Introduction When we observe a plant, then we see that every plant has roots, stem and leaves. Plants also have flowers and fruits. We have already discussed characteristics, types, modifications and functions of roots, stems, leaf and inflorescence. Now we will study flowers. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Find out characteristics of flower Find out types of flowers Study parts of flowers Identify types of corolla Understand estivation Find out characteristics of androsium Study parts of stamen Find out types of androsium Find out cohesion of stamens. Study adhesion of stamens. Understand attachment of anther to filament. Find out characteristics of gynosium. Study parts of gynosium. Find out types of gynosium. Understand placentation. The flower. Flowers are the reproductive structures in angiosperms. A flower is defined as a modified vegetative shoot meant for sexual reproduction. The flower consists of a very short axis on which whorls of different parts arises. Usually the flower arises in the axial of a modified leaf called bract. When bracts are present at the base of the pedicel, the flower is said to be bracteate. When the flower consists of a stalk called pedicel, it is described as pedicellate. When the pedicel is absent, the flower is described as Types of flower On the basis of position of thalamus and other parts of flower, the flower is of three types. Hypogynous, perigynous, epigynous. Hypogynous. Thalamus is prominent and the gynosium is situated on the top of the thalamus. Other floral parts, that is, calyx, corolla, and androsium, are situated below the gynosium. Ovary is superior, it is regarded as primitive. Perigynous, the thalamus is flat or cup-shaped. Calyx, corolla and androsium are attached to the tip of the cup and gynosium at the center. Ovary is half inferior. It is regarded as intermediate between hypo and epigynous. Epigynous, the thalamus is in the form of a deep cup and the margins of the cup are fused with the wall of the ovary. Calyx, corolla and androsium are born on the top of the ovary. Ovary is inferior. It is regarded as highly advanced condition. Parts of flower Each flower normally has four floral whorls. Calyx, corolla, androsium and gynosium. Calyx the calyx is the outermost whorl of the flower and the members are called sepals. Generally, sepals are green, leaf-like and protect the flower in the bud stage. The calyx may be gamosepalous, sepals united, or polysepalous, sepals free. Corolla Corolla is composed of petals. It is the second whorl of flower. Petals are usually brightly colored to attract insects for pollination. Like calyx, corolla may be also free, polypetalous or united gamopetalous. The shape and color of corolla vary greatly in plants. Corolla may be tubular, bell-shaped, funnel-shaped or wheel-shaped. Types of Corolla Tubular 
petals form a tube like structure. Example Composity. Cruciform. This type of corolla possesses the four free float petals arranged in the form of a cross. Example Cruciferi. Papillonaceous. The five free petals are arranged as similar to a butterfly. They are arranged in vexillary type of estivation in which there is a large petal, standard or vexillum, two lateral free petals, wings, and two inner united and boat shaped petals, keels. Example Papillonaceae. Ligulate. The ray florets of composite are arranged in the form of a tongue. Example Sunflower. Estivation. The mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in floral bud with respect to the other members of the same world is known as estivation. The main types of estivation are valvate, twisted, imbricate and vexillary. Valvate is when members of calyx or corolla are just in contact with each other but not overlapping. Example. Calotropis, it is said to be valvate. Twisted is when one margin of the member of calyx or corolla is overlapped and the other margin is overlapping the next member, the estivation is called twisted. Example, china rose, lady's finger and cotton, etc. Imbricate is when both the margins of one member of calyx or corolla are overlapped and both the margins of other member are external and remaining, are twisted in nature, estivation is called imbricate. Example, cassia, gulmoha, etc. It may be of two types, ascending imbricate, descending imbricate. Ascending imbricate is when posterior member is internal and overlapped by lateral members, which in their turn are overlapped by anterior members. Example, Cecil pinoidi. Descending imbricate or vesillary is found in pea and bean flowers. There are five petals. The largest, standard, overlaps the two lateral petals, wings, which in turn overlap the two smallest anterior petals, keel. This type of estivation is known as vexillary, of papillonaceous. Quincuncial is when the margins of two members of the calyx or corolla are both external and of the two members are internal and of one member is one margin internal and one margin external then it is called quincuncial. Example, Cidium and Panica etc. Androsium Androsium is the male reproductive part and constitutes the third whorl in the flower. It is formed of one too many stamens. Each stamen consists of a filament and an anther at its tip. Each stamen which consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther. Each anther is usually bilobed and each lobe has two chambers, the pollen sacs. The pollen grains are produced in pollen sacs. A sterile stamen is called staminode. A typical stamen has three parts. Filament, anther, connectives. Each stamen generally has a stalk called filament. There may be a variation in the length of filaments within a flower, as in salvia, and mustard. On top of the filament, an anther and pollen sacs called microsporangia. The tissue between the locules and the cells is called the connective. Types of androsium. On the basis of length of the stamens, androsium are of three types. Didynamous, tetradynamous, heterostemonous. Didynamous is when 
two stamens are long and two are short. Tetradynamous is when four stamens are long and two are short. Heterostamenous is when all the stamens are of different lengths. Cohesion of stamens Union of a part of stamen, a whole stamen, is called cohesion of stamens. On the basis of cohesion, the androsium is of following types. Adelphus, Syngenesis, Synandrus. Adelphus is when the filaments of stamens are united and anthers are free of the condition is known as Adelphus. It is again of three types. Monadelphus, Diadelphus, Polyadelphus. Monadelphus is when the filaments of all stamens are united together in one bundle and anthers are free of the condition is known as monadelphus. Example, Hibiscus rosa sinensis. Dialdelphus is when the filaments of the stamens are united together in two bundles and anthers are free. The condition is known as dialdelphus. Example, Papillionaceae. Polyadelphus is when the filaments of the stamens are fused to form more than two bundles. The condition is known as polyadelphus. Example, citrus. Syngenaceous or synanthus is when filament of stamens are free and anthers are united. The condition is known as syngenaceous or synanthus. Example, asteraceae. Synandrous is when both filament and anthers of stamens are united to form one bundle. The condition is known as synandrous. Example, Cucurbita. Adhesion of stamens. Fusion of stamens of flower with other floral parts is called adhesion of stamens. On the basis of adhesion, the androsium is of following types. Epipetalus, Epicephalus, Epiphylus, Gynandrus. Epipetalus is when the stamens are attached to the petals. Example, Solanum nigrum, Brinjal. Epicephalus is when the stamens are attached to the sepals. Example, Verbena. Epiphylus or Epitepalus is when the stamens are attached to the perianth lobes, tepals. Example, Asphododius tenuifolius. Gynandrus is when the stamens are attached to the carpels. Example, Calotropis procera. Attachment of anther to the filament. Basifixed is when the filament is attached to the base of the anther is called basifixed. Example, Brassica compestris. Adnate. When the filament is attached to the two anther lobes from base to the apex is called adnate. Example, magnolia. Dorsifixed is when the filament is firmly attached to the back of the anther is called dorsifixed. Example, passiflora. Versatile is when the filament is attached to the back of the anther to a point and the anther can move freely, then it is called versatile. Example, grass. Gynosium. Gynosium is the female reproductive part of the flower and is made up of one or more carpels. It is the fourth whorl of the flower. It is situated terminally on the thalamus. Gynosium or pistils are composed of one or more carpels, which is the female reproductive organ of the flower. A carpel is a modified leaf folded on the ventral suturae. Margins are fused together. Midrib portion is known as the dorsal suturae. Ovules are attached on the placenta, which usually developed on the ventral suturae. After fertilization, the ovules develop into seeds 
and the ovary matures into a fruit. Parts of gynosium. A carpal consists of three parts, stigma, style, ovary. The stigma is usually at the tip of the style and is the receptive surface for pollen grains. It is situated on the top of the ovary. It is a long slender structure which develops from the upper part of the ovary. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The styles are of three types, terminal or apical, lateral, gynobasic, Terminal or apical is condition when the style is usually situated on the top of the ovary and in line of the ovary. Example, Salanum, Hibiscus rosa sinensis. Lateral is condition when in some flowers where ovary bends on one side so that the style appears to be arising from the lateral side. Example, Mango. Gynobasic is condition in Labiati where the ovary is four-lobed and the style appears to be arising from the depression between the lobes. Example, Ossimum Sanctum. Ovary is the lowermost swollen part of the gynosium, which contains one or more ovules attached to a flattened, cushion-like placenta. Ovary is a modified leaf, may be unilocular, bilocular or multilocular. Types of gynosium. Depending on the number of carpels present, gynosium is of three types. Monocarpelry, bicarpelry, polycarpelry. When gynosium has only one carpel, then it is called monocarpelry. Example, P. Leguminosae. When gynosium has two carpels, then it is called bicarpelry. Example, Solanaceae, Cruciferi. When gynosium has more than two carpels, then it is called polycarpelry. Example, Malvasi. Depending on the state of carpels, gynosium is of two types. Apocarpus, Sinocarpus. When more than one carpel is present, there may be free and are called apocarpus. Example, lotus and rose. When carpels are fused, they are termed sinocarpus. Example, mustard and tomato. Placentation. The arrangement of ovules within the ovary is known as placentation. The placentation are of different types. Marginal, exile, parietal, basal, central, free central, superficial. In the marginal placentation, gynosium is monocarpalry, multicarpalry, and apocarpus. Ovary is unilocular. The ovules are born in one or more rows on the placenta situated on the ventral suture. Example. Leguminosae. In the exile placentation, gynosium is bicarpelry to multicarpelry and syncarpus. Ovary is multilocular. The margins of the individual carpel project inwards and then fuse together so that the ventral suturase are placed along the axis. There are usually as many chambers as the carpels. Example, Malvasi. In the parietal placentation, gynosium is bicarpalry or tricarpalry and syncarpus. Ovary is unilocular. Sometimes it may be bilocular due to the development of false septum. The placenta is born on the fused margins of the adjacent carpels, thus the ovule are born in the periphery of the ovary. Example, cruciferi. In the basal placentation, gynosium is bicarpalry and syncarpus. Ovary is unilocular. The placenta develops at the tip of the thalamus at the base of the ovary.
A single ovule is attached at the base of the ovary. Example, tegetis. In the free central placentation, gynosium is multicarpillary and syncarpous. Ovary is unilocular. The ovules are born on the axis in the center of the ovary. Example, dianthus. The placentation is axile, but due to breakdown of partition wall, it becomes free central. In the superficial placentation, gynosium is multicarpillary and syncarpous. Ovary is multilocular. The ovules are born on the inner surface of the partition scepter. Example, nymphae. Did you know, in family Asteraceae, inflorescence is capitulum. Stamens are syngenesis in composite family. Gynosium in family cruciferi is bicarpillary, syncarpous, superior and unilocular. But it becomes bilocular due to false septum called replum. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. A plant having butterfly-shaped flowers with one standard, two wing-like algae and two keel-shaped petals belong to Fabaceae. The example of Trimerus, unisexual flower, is Coccus nucifera. Didelphus stamens are characteristic of Fabaceae. Tetradynamous condition is found in Brassica campestris. Family cruciferi has bimerous flowers, six stamens, bicarpillary gynosium. Trimerous flowers, superior ovary and axile placentation are characteristic of Liliaceae. Pentamerous, actinomorphic flowers, bicarpillary ovary with oblique septa are characteristic features of Solanaceae. A flower which can be divided into the halves in only one vertical plane is called zygomorphic. Tetradynamous androsium is found in mustard. Synandrous condition is the fusion of both filaments and anthers. Cianthium is characterized by single female flower surrounded by many male flowers and have involucres of bracts enclosing all flowers. Monothecus anther is characteristic of Malvasi. Gynobasic style is characteristic feature of Laminaceae. Bicarpillary syncarpus inferior ovary is found in Cypsella. The order of opening of floral parts from the periphery towards the center is called centripetal. Glooms represent bracts. Smallest flower is wolfia.